वन सेकेंड वेलकम माई डियर फ्रेंड्स द सेकेंड सेगमेंट ऑफ सोलर टी वी एम पी पी एंड एम पी पी टी एलगोरि इन दी पास लेक्चर वी हरिटली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट हाउ वी कैन इंट्रोड्यूस दी ड्यूटी साइकिल इन दी कन्वर्टर सेक्शन दैट इज कनेक्टेड विथ दी सोलर पी वी नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस दी मैक्सिम पावर पॉइंट ट्रैकिंग algorithm so this two small modules we have done that is act as a pre design because those who have already covered the aspects of power electronics they must know how the duty cycle are going to be held a heart of the converters means with the incorporation of the duty cycle in this converters how the voltage will be changed or specifically the rise in voltage in case of boost converter and decrement in the voltage in case of buck converter now we shall begin with the concept of mppt with simulation analysis mppt algorithms how to design the inductor and capacitor various converter topologies and if you can go with the new adaptive algorithm then how we are going to implement with the solar i shall try to demonstrate this thing with the pc software so in the introductory part we have completed this maximum power points now we need to track this so over here बक्स कन्वर्टर द सेम डायग्राम इज देयर बट इन द रियल वर्ल्ड दिस इज कनेक्टेड विथ सम लोड दैट लोड इज नाउ ए सी इन नेचर इट मैन बी ए सी और डी सी बट इन मेजोरिटी ऑफ द केसेज ए सी लोड्स आर अवेलेबल इन डे टू डे लाइफ सो वी आर कनेक्टिंग दिस कन्वर्टर्स विद द इनवर्ट रिजल्ट सो again when the switch is closed and when the switch is open in both the cases the uninterrupted power will be reached at from source to the load end or at load end so from the equation in the output section that's what it's a revision of the past lecture this the ratio of d upon 1 minus d that is equals to output voltage upon input voltage and i try to explain the same thing with the example this example proves that we have taken this as a boost converter it concludes the same thing by considering two aspect our output voltage is more than the input voltage over here it's a boost converter and our duty cycle second thing our duty cycle is about 0.5 so if we can now conclude this three requisites so this is what the change in the voltage in current with the change in percentage duty cycle so now i'll start a demo of the simple buck converter in the closed loop manner so we have designed the inductor and capacitor lots of online converters are available and in this case i have used online buck converter boost converter and buck boost converter calculations authored by michael green published by texas instrument incorporation so what we try to do is we are having some input voltage over here this is the configuration of buck converter one diode is provided to not allow the reverse power flow a uh, lc tank network load and some measurement units we also have a closed loop converter so in that case we are sensing the voltage from the output side and we are comparing that voltage with the voltage that's what we want over here then disconnected with the pi 
then we are having limited and we can select the duty cycle which is either 0.5 or above 0.5 and then we will generate the pulse this entire simulation is connected with 10 ohm resistance and another 10 ohm resistance is connected in parallel and I have tried to give the same thing with the time logic means after some time the slower will on to check the effect of this closed loop system so our input voltage is 100 volt and our reference voltage is the 50 volt so if you can check this 50 volt over here at that time we get the straight line at 50 volt and this spike shows that after half time suppose the simulation time is one second then after 0.5 second this load is introduced so this is how the buck converter works and this is what the pulse of the buck converter we are having the pulse strain of the same now we are going to introduce this kind of techniques as I will try to demonstrate the buck converter first so this buck converters which are connected with the PV is usually used to charge the batteries because what happens generally in the battery whenever you will have bucked down the voltage at that time the current is increased in the output side so as the current is increased in the output side the battery will charge in the more faster rate so this is what the advantage so let's take a practical example if we are having the 17 volt PV voltage and my battery voltage is 12 and if I will pack the voltage from 17 to 12 at that time the current in the output is marginally increased so I will get the more output current if we are having the buck converter this is what the basic concept or the truth behind the buck converters used for the bat battery charging applications for the photovoltaics this can be also used for the wind energy conversion system but in this session I try to cover only the significance of the photovoltaic only means MPPT on the photovoltaic only so if you can have the MPPT techniques for solar energy conversion system for particular PV these two techniques are well known across the globe the first is the perturb and observe perturb means the interruption and observe means the effect of interruption it is known as P and O technique and the second is the incremental conductance technique it is also known as INC technique so before proceed further let's begin what is the concept of MPPT so if you have gone through the lecture where we have incorporated the DC load so in that case the operating point on the IV curve was the concept so let's revise this concept the operating point of the load is the point at which the IV curve of the load and the IV curve of the PV intersects so in this case the power from PV module will vary in the case of the radiation of the sun and the temperature and some other climatic conditions such as moisture and dust of the atmosphere due to this reason it requires to continuous tracking of this optimal power points otherwise it will track only suboptimal points so the intersection of the load characteristic will not track MPP so MPP has to track with the change in atmospheric condition and this thing has been demonstrated in this figure so in the first case this sky blue color line is the IV curve the red color line is PV curve and we need to track the point 
So the pink color line shows the behavior of ideal curve, but every time the ideal curve is not like this. If it is actual load, say for example P was that, this might be at this line. So we need to track this power. It can reach over here, which shows the maximum power hyperbola on the IV curve and it will track the maximum power. So every time your load is going to be changed. So suppose this actual load is over here. Now it might be over here, it might be over here, it might be over here. So at that time we can track this power. So for that the maximum power point tracking algorithms are used. See guys, there is no magic in this. We are just playing with the impedance matching game. If you can go back into the fundamentals of maximum power transfer theorem covered in the undergraduate program of electrical engineering in network analysis subject, your concept of RTH equals to RL. So at that point, the maximum power is transferred from source to load. So this concept is used over here also but that concept is there for the fixed load over here the load is variable in nature the source is variable in nature again you can have a source we can subdivide it in terms of the radiations and the temperature and as we have concluded in the last short video that the radiation and the temperature both are changing simultaneously so the radiation largely impacts the short circuit current of the PV module and temperature largely impacts the VOC so you can redraw all the curves if your climate will change and at that time your load will also change so there are three possibilities radiation will change load and temperature will be constant so there are three factorial things you can introduce it is not our cup of tea right now and have a more video session in the coming days on this but the main thing is that whenever we are introducing this thing we need to track this point and this is your maximum power point the algorithm needs to track this point known as maximum power point tracking algorithms so this is what the points that I tried to explain so this is what the block diagram for mppt algorithm in the closed loop manner so we need to reach over here so for that we are having the solar pv module we are having a voltage and current we can sense the voltage and current that has been fed to the mppt algorithm depending upon the selected algorithm the reference voltage or reference current will come out it has been compared the actual voltage or current in this case it's a voltage based MPPT algorithm the error signal is generated and it is given into the controller or any controller in this case it might be a PA controller and then we can having the modulator signal so it will generate the duty cycle and my switch will operate and the power is transferred to the DC load so this is what the block diagram for MPPT algorithm. So if we can have a same concept with the circuit diagram at the initial part, what is the concept? The concept is PV module is connected with the DO state and this curve is well known to us. So if we can increase the resistance my current will go down and I will try to approach this VOC point. If I will decrease the resistance, the current will increase, I will reach at ISC point. But this is totally uncontrolled. So to provide the same thing, this is what the thing that has been plot only for IV curve at the various value of resistance and you need to track this RL that is R optimum point through algorithm. So basically there are two types of MPPT algorithm. One is the mechanical tracking 
where we are having a DC motor and the panel itself is reoriented with the change in direction of the sun ray or the sun itself and the second is the MPPT that is what we used for the interfacing the load and the solar PV so the thing is that we are going to introduce the power interface over here in the previous demo it was the buck converter if you remember and over here it is connected with the load so what we are trying to do we are keeping input impedance fixed we shall not vary it we are changing the output impedance so by having the permutations and combinations the optimal point will be reached within the input condition and my output power will be vary with the change in load so this is what the reflection of load over here we are having the input impedance RT seen by the module it is fixed and we shall track this optimal power point with a straight line as a 1 upon RT and similarly that point has been again plot as X on the screen on PV curve. This figure have taken from one of the renowned professors lecture, Professor Edumanan, IISC, Bangalore. You may go through the lecture on the concept of MPPT by Professor L. Umanand also. So thank you sir for providing us this information. So let's uh, proceed further. So now how this P and O algorithm works. So at that time you can take any of the point on the PV curve in this case. And you can check this whether the system approaches towards MPPT. If your answer is no, then you need to introduce one more increment in the perturbation. So your characteristic equation will be the reference voltage equals to your sample you have selected. Suppose it's a k sample plus or minus C. That is what the perturbation size we are going to introduce. Now as far as perturbation size is concerned, so at that time if you can check if my perturbation size is more, then my output voltage is also having the considerable value. So the equation might be your reference voltage equals to reference K minus 1 that is past iteration plus or minus C where C is the perturbation size. To select the perturbation size, if you go with the higher perturbation size, you will reach at this point within short time. Suppose I will select from here, I will select this perturbation, this and this, this might be any digit. But our accuracy is less. If we we'll go with the smaller step size, then the perturbation size is less, accuracy is high, but it will take long time. So to reach that MPPT, so the concept is this. This concept is known as perturb and observe. So, if you can have this flow chart of algorithm, as we have sense over here, the voltage and current, this voltage and the current, has, it has been sensed and it has been given to this MPPT algorithm, then we should introduce the power. The power equals to V into I. So, in this case, if power equals to V into I, this is our current power, this is my past power. If it is the same, then we are having the same duty cycle or same reference voltage and hence duty cycle. If it is no, then there are two possibility. If this difference present power and past power greater than zero or present power and past power less than zero. If this difference is greater than zero, 
then there is decrement in the power if greater than 0 then it is incremented in the power from this point onwards you will find n number of research articles papers book chapters in the internet world where people are also tested these algorithms in terms of voltage and the current this is the flow chart of voltage as a portable variable so if this condition says that no then we will check it for the voltage if my previous voltage and the past voltage means previous voltage is greater than the past voltage if yes then we need to decrease the V reference by certain perturbation variable so what is our equation what I spoke V reference equals to V reference K minus 1 plus or minus C in this case the minus C will be introduced over here in this case the plus C will be introduced if you can go back over here if it is yes then VK minus VK minus 1 greater than 0 if it is no now in this case if it is yes then we can decrease the reference in this case if it is no then we can decrease the reference and similarly we can increase the reference voltage and then the algorithm will be written to its original state so this loop will rotate every time once your climatic condition will be changed say for example somebody can say that what if the radiation will change ultimately this p is borderless v and i v and i that is voltage and current so in both the cases the voltage and current ultimately the power will change so the results in this four possibilities so our next concept is the incremental conductance algorithm so in incremental conductance algorithm over here change in voltage has been measured and if you can go with the PV curve of the PV module we shall go with the dp by dv that is the ratio of power upon voltage and its derivative if it is equal to 0 then we reach that MPPT if it is greater than 0 we are having the left side of the PV curve and left side of the PV curve not at MPP point and if dp by dv less than 0 it is the right side of MPP point so if we can go back again this is the flow chart of incremental conductance algorithm so again see again it's a voltage base our outcome is same but the method is different so if you can sense voltage and current we'll have a delta v and delta i so in this case we are having the conductance it is the ratio see guys in ultimate case the current of the pv module is less compared to voltage and if you go with the ratio of i by v again it is still less so you will get the accurate result of mpv points in the latter section of this lecture i shall try to introduce the basic difference between these two techniques so if you can check the voltage perturbation if it is current perturbation then delta i equals to zero in this case so if delta v equals to zero if it is yes then we will check with the delta i if both are yes then the algorithm will return there is no change in the climatic conditions or the load if it is no then this i plus delta i by delta i that is very important over here if it is yes then this fraction is very small so again we can return but if no then we will check that whether this in greater than 0 or less than 0 if it is greater than 0 then we can increase the reference if it is less than 0 then we can decrease the v reference in similar way if you go with the delta i greater than 0 or less than 0 because over here once we have introduced the i by v term only we will check the delta i over here so if this condition says no then it must be greater than 0 
somebody can say that sir what if it is less than zero so less than zero again it will come into the same segment and your algorithm will be written so in similar case if it is yes then again it's a reverse of it increase in increasing the reference over here decreasing the v reference so this is how the incremental conductance works so now we can introduce this di by dv if di by dv is minus 1 upon v into i that is i by v ultimately so it is our mpp part if it is greater than minus i by v this is left of mpp and if it is greater than minus i by v it is right of mpp i am sorry it's di by dv greater than minus i by v it is left of mpp and less than minus i by v it is right side of mpp ultimately our power is v into i so now let us begin with the demonstration of algorithm in the pcm software the same converter I have used that is the buck converter but now this buck converter is connected with the photovoltaic module and the battery of 2.24 volt is connected. Now before proceed further the part of an observer algorithm is used for the gradually varying climatic condition and incremental conductance algorithm is used for fast changing algorithms with fast changing climatic condition. It means that the locations where the radiation changing is in very fast manner, radiation, temperature or the load, but particularly radiation and temperature, people will prefer incremental conductance. However, in this case, people will prefer the part of an observer where the gradual change in radiation is there. Moreover, as we have a particular perturbation size, we reached at MPP point by having adding or subtracting the particular radiation pattern or a particular radiation format. We are going to introduce the perturbation constant C or we can say perturbation size. So that perturbation size is known as perturbing variable. So you will find lots of articles also how to select this perturbation size. But usually if you are considering the voltage and you are changing the radiation, obviously the impact of the radiation on the voltage for the photovoltaics is less. So we are selecting 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.2 as a perturbing so now over here the square wave is given that is the change in the radiation pattern and that pattern remains fixed and 25 degrees centigrade so over here we are introducing the perturbation variable and we are going to introduce this PV panel in the PCM software we are having the voltage sensors over here it's a part of an observed MPPT algorithm and over here the battery is there. The reference voltage is selected from this segment. I will try to demonstrate you if you will change the input parameters then how this MPPT shall not track. First we will check how it is tracked. So this is what the maximum power from here available from PV and it is superimposed on the power generated by the PV so it has been almost right. So such algorithm have effectiveness above 98 percentage that is known as the tracking efficiency. Similarly instead of the single module if you go with the four number of modules that is connected in series without changing the reference then this MPPT detract from its original position. Similarly, if you log and set the reference and set the PA controlling parameters, your efficiency would be again retrieved. So if you can see the case over here, a 60 watt module. Over here, 240 means four such modules are connected in series, and we are harnessing almost, almost 230 to 240 watt power. In this case, we are assuming that the converters are ideal in nature. 
so if you need to introduce the basic calculations of this stage there is a data sheet of michael green michael green is author and it is available online it is introduced by texas instrument so from that you will decide your input voltage input current output voltage output current depending upon the converter configuration and efficiency how you can measure the efficiency it is estimated as 80 percent usually converter efficiency is more than 80 percent because they all are static in nature so from this equation you may also find out the inductor value and you may also find out the value of the capacitance so now we can demonstrate the same thing with the boost converter so for starting the same thing we shall plot the various IV and PV curves of the module that what we are going to target so this is what the input parameters that we are going to introduce in the PC model this is what the various IV and PV curve with the change in radiations level and the temperature level and then with those equations of L and C we found out L and C of the boost converter so the plot diagram of the system is like this this is the photovoltaic part these are the sensor parts this is our boost converter what solar is the watt meter that's what the power has been drawn by the load and this fourth stage is the load section so the PV from where you can sense the current and the voltage then a converter stage so it will be boost up it's a basic configuration of the boost converter and over here we try to measure the pulse and then we are having the voltage in the output side so again this calculation the same in the one slide I tried to introduce you may stop the video or you may download the sheet by calculating the same so case one the case one is the standard test condition means the input of this diagram the input of this diagram we are having 1000 watt per meter square radiation and 25 degree centigrade temperature it has been fixed and my R is 20 ohm. In the previous section, we tried to demonstrate with the change in radiation. In this lecture, I tried to demonstrate the same with the change in the load pattern. Means my radiation temperature is fixed and my load is 20 ohm. So this is my output voltage, module voltage with the red color output voltage with the blue color with having the various fine tuning parameters of the pi you will get the straight line over here also this is what the tracking effectiveness this is the power drawn by the load and these are the pulses again this graph might not be a straight line because i tried to plot the transient mode of the system However, in steady state mode, you will get the good quality of the voltage levels. Similarly, if you read it, because in this case, we are actually checking the MPPT effectiveness. We are not checking the quality of the graphs. Again, if you increase the load current, means decrement of the resistance, see the boosting level has been decreased, still it has been tracked. And this is what the power so power is reduced in this case because the load demand increased so there is slightly reduction because afterwards if you have a very less amount of resistance this PV might not be feed the power according to the requirement of the load so people prefer rheostat to test this PV module again if it is 10 ohm these are the various conditions but see the boosting level it has been dropped and for 5 ohm C it's almost negligible for the same so 3.29 the 
boosting level it's not there but still it will track the maximum power somehow but if you can check the pulse our pulse is zero it means that over here below this the power cannot be fed and this might be our RL RTH equals to RL condition but the converter was not present at that time in our mind now the next case if you can reduce the radiation that's what we have done for that perturbation 1000 watt per meter square to 800 watt per meter square we can change it from 800 watt per meter square to 600 watt per meter square at STC means your temperature is still 25 there is no change in temperature only radiation has been changed remember this at STC in the case 1 this 1000 watt per meter square to 800 watt per meter square you have checked why because the perturbation has to introduced otherwise the algorithm cannot shoot every work so this is the module voltage the, the boost voltage this is the radiation pattern we have followed this section this is my output power so it is reduced compared to what uh, between 1000 watt per meter square to 800 watt per meter square this is what the MPPT tracking efficiency this is our maximum power and this uh, blue one is our track power in ps 3 we are keeping the same thing but now we will change the temperature from 25 to 40 degree so again the slight decrement in the efficiency slight decrement in the boosting voltage this entire thing can be done at the 15 ohm resistance now if we can compare with MPPT and without MPPT algorithm so in that case our comparison is in terms of this if it is with MPPT and without MPPT in that case we are having a zero boosting over here we are not going to track anything that is going to be held because the algorithm is not existing if you can again use MPPT see the power output has been tracked and you will get the significant amount of power over here some of the power is already thrown by the load but the efficiency we are not getting that maximum RT point that's what we discussed earlier Similarly, we can go with the boost converter stages for the same. That's what we used. So, if you want to do some work at your homework, you can design your LNC of your own choice level. That's why it has been reintroducing right now in this slide. So, now I'll try to explain the same thing with example. Because we have started in the last lecture for buck boost converter. So in converter we are having some range. So if our range is 8 to 40 volt, so in that case our output voltage we are expecting is 15 volt regulated. Our switching frequency is 20 kilohertz. Our capacitor is 470 microfarad. So we need to calculate the minimum that the converter will operating in the continuous conduction mode if my output power is greater than or equal to 2 watt so let's begin the example so our input voltage range is given output voltage range is given switching frequency is given p0 that is power expected highest power is 2 watt then we can find the current by having the ratio of p0 upon v0 it is 0.1 and our R equals to V0 square upon P0 here we are taking V0 so I will take 15 over here keep this thing in the mind now the duty ratio for input and output voltage we are having equation D equals to V0 upon V0 plus V in that is equals to 15 divided by 8 plus 15 it's 0 0.65 for 8 volt for 40 volt it is 0 0.27 so that is a range of duty cycle see this buck boost converter from 8 to 15 it is in boost mode 40 to 15 it is in buck mode so we are having the huge range 
of the duty cycle it means in both the way it will operate and the equation of inductor is 1 minus d square into r divided by 2 into fsw and we can count we can calculate say for example for this 0.25 and from the equation of power we have also calculated the resistance from this so it is 1.49 millihenry so this is our minimum value and from this equation you might also find out extended to this problem c out minimum that is 1.17 microfarad however such kind of capacitor might not be available into the market so in that case you may take the nearest value of the capacitor that is used now this is an example of step down converter so in step down converter we can consider the all component to be ideal but problem statement is expected output voltage is 5 volt and the range is now 10 to 40 volt the switching frequency is now increased as 50 kilohertz the power output expected is greater than or equals to 5 volt so we have r over here this v0 square expected output of p0 get the 5 volt so the duty ratio D would be V0 upon V in, that is 5 by 10 equals to 0.5. So this duty ratio for output voltage of 10 volt, this is for 5 volt, 5 by 10, this is for 5 by 40. Sorry for this, the output voltage for 40 volt, it is 0.125. So over here 0 0.125, 2 0.5 is the duty cycle. And the minimum inductance accordingly is 38.5. 21 micro Henry. Similarly, C out minimum is 2.5 micro farad. See, the switching frequency is also we need to change as per the equation. So, this are the two examples. Now, we are going to connect the PV with DC load and the incorporation of the MPPT algorithm that is our final segment. So, when the PV area is connected with the DC to DC converter and the load through block diagram I try to explain you how you can incorporate the control method and then PWM by generating the duty cycle over here duty will be over here instead of here so we can control this DC to DC converter so in this case in the previous case the same diagram was there for the voltage perturbation this is the adaptive control in the case of the current perturbation this block diagram I have taken from one of the recent paper published in 2014 that is adaptive control MPPT technique. It is in IEEE transaction authored by Professor Satish Kumar Kolamina. Similarly, if you can go with the same thing, we have to port that algorithm and then we'll check the other things, other things in terms of input and Output. So this is what the code has been there in the DLL block. We are having the input. We are comparing this part of an observed variable that is reference current. Previously it was reference voltage. So this is now current perturbation algorithm. And then this is our previous section. As usual, this is our sensor section, this is our MPPT section, this is our control logic, this is our boost converter, power measurement unit and the load. This is what that is the analysis. The result has been done and analyzed 250 watt module. And this is what our maximum power as the heat is of the power is due to the perturbation applied in the square wave fashion in the input. Similarly, we are having the power from the our drone from this watt meter and we get the actual voltage and the boosted voltage. So again if you can compare the same thing with MPPT without MPPT, see the change in power that has been shown. So by connecting this switch with the ground, 
the same speed you are going to will be bypassed you will find this that is it now when the pp is connected with dc load over here we have tried to demonstrate the boost converter and buck converter topology that is in the section of the isolated converters people may also prefer to use the non isolated topologies the isolated topologies are boost converter converter buck converter and the buck boost converter in case of non isolated topologies they are flyback converter push pull converter half bridge full bridge and the forward converters now i'll try to demonstrate the adaptive one so this is the algorithm i was talking about i did author this thing is part of an observe and this thing is newly introduced i'm thankful for the author for providing us a such efficient algorithm to generate the maximum power output methods So this thing we have introduced in the solar PV modules with the boost converter. The error is given to the PI controller and the meter. And we are trying to get voltage waveform is given to the boost converter, and we are getting this results for the same algorithm. That's what we have. Yeah. Similarly, if the modules, multiple modules, are connected in series, then This is the simulation analysis for the 30 modules of 60 volt each connected in series, so we can have 800, 1800 watts. Sorry, 1.8 kilowatt power output. This case. So thank you very much for your patience listening in this session. I tried to cover all the aspects of maximum power point with. its importance for the solar pv how to track the maximum power point using voltage and current and the perturbing variable i hope you enjoyed the session i am very much thankful to all the authors those who have published a good research articles and good online lectures for the same and i am also thankful for all the listeners to listen this session thank you very much